Apologies, apologies. It's five past ten. I was too busy guest begging. Good morning and welcome to our Children's Sunday. Who's excited? Woohoo! So Children's Day was actually on the 7th of March. Catherine was away and we felt that was inappropriate to do it without her. We didn't want her to miss out. So we have decided to do it today. So today the children and youth are leading us in worship. Who's excited? Yeah, I'm so excited. And this is really loud. Do you want to maybe turn me down because I am a foghorn? It's a use. <laughs> so we have um, an amazing lineup this morning. We do an amazing lineup this morning. Um, but first, I just wanted to uh, make special recognition to um, Catherine for all your work for this morning. Uh, she's worked in with me to do today. And Sarah as well is doing a little section with youth. So thanks, Sarah. She's too busy talking to our interpretive dance uh, leader. So. Thank you, Sarah, for your help with today, this morning. <laughs> but today is also International Day of Prayer for Children and Youth. So we're going to spend some time praying for children and youth. Uh, and so Catherine's got us sorted for that after I've preached. So who's ready? Yeah. All right. I'm going to invite Catherine then. She's going to lead us in a song that they've been doing in Thrive and Powerhouse that they love. So anyway, all the kids come up. Come up the front. Come on. Pardon? No, yeah. Come on, kids. Right, are we ready, Paul? Oh, yes. Stand up, everybody. Come this join us. Light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine.
All right, now we're in for something special. So kids, you need to go down the back with Vanessa and Brianna. And Ben, Ben's our uh, interpretive dance leader. We just, we roped Ben in. Go down to Vanessa and Brianna, all the kids. It's super duper easy. You can join in if you want to, no pressure. All right. Turn to the person next to you, say, God loves you and so do I. Turn to the person on your other side and say, you are worthy. All right, we ready, team? I'm, I'm going to get out of the way. Go. Eighteen kids in Tongue, one kid in Fiji, one kinder kindergarten in Tonga. Uh, can, can all the kids come up to the front? It's time for all of this.
your house today. And Father, I pray that um, as we have given with a joyful heart and as there's laughter around, Father, that we'd carry on with that. Father, that this money will be used to bring joy to those that we don't know. Father, that um, you'll multiply it, that you'll increase the harvest in which um, is happening in Tonga and Fiji. Father, that you would um, pour your spirit out upon those workers in the areas. Um, but Lord, that we just see you being glorified through our giving in your name. Amen. All right, we have a very special guest today. Oh. Okay, he's going to get the special guest, okay? Huh? You're always, Ash, always. Very special. We're actually your family. Is the guest ready? Here comes Scientist Steve. Hello, Scientist Steve. Here he is, here he is. Yeah, you were meant to bring your science coat. <laughs> Can you keep up this accent the whole time? <laughs> Bonjour. Do you want me to hold this? Uh, I might just have to, I don't know if I'll be able to do it with it. Okay. Okay, I'll try to use this. Good morning. Okay, so over the last few weeks in Thrive, we've been uh, going quite deep and asking some pretty cool questions, or the kids have been asking some pretty cool questions, which is really exciting. Uh, you know, as we come up to Easter, we've been talking about, hey, well, why did Jesus have to die for us? Well, what was that about? They've been talking about, how, how does Holy Spirit connect with me? How do I hear from God? The conversations have been great. The kids are amazing. So this is a pucky pucky for our kids. They're, they're awesome. <laughs> So, uh, inspired by Carol and Fee, we try to do object lessons and bring science uh, in, into the classroom as much as we can, because uh, those, those object lessons really captivate kids and really just spark their, their curiosity, and we want them to ask questions, right? I want them to be like a Berean and just, just look into the scriptures and not just necessarily say, oh, just believe it because we tell you to. No, no, there's a, there's a solid foundation for our faith. So we want them to unpack that and discover that. So today, we're going to have a, a very short session. Uh, I'm going to revisit the aeroplane I built last week or the week before, because it fits in nicely. And we're going to talk about a couple of things. And it's going to answer that question, why did Jesus have to die for us? Or why did Jesus die for us? Uh, and here, ha-ha, oh, there's been a bit of mixing going on in the travels, but that's okay. We can cope with that. You see, here we've got, we've got, We've got us, as we were intended to be. Look at that. Oh, nice and pure. Wow. Could drink that up, right? Fortunately, things fell apart in the garden, didn't they, when a certain uh, piece of fruit was consumed and uh, sin came into the world. And sin takes God's beautiful, pure creation and turns it into this. Not particularly uh, uh, pleasant to, to look at. I'm sure it tastes pretty disgusting as well. And this represents the world, sin in the world, okay? And unfortunately, when uh, from that moment of original sin, uh, sin entered our lives, and whenever, you know, we may do something like, you know, tell a lie or not honor someone, hurt someone, hurt ourselves, um, steal something, we are bringing sin into our life. And I don't think I put enough sin in the bottle, so I'll, I'll top it up. I, I happen to have a little... Uh, I happen to have a little extra sin here just on hand because object lessons, you know, you, you've got to go with the flow. There, oh, oh, look at that. You see, God's pure creation uh, doesn't look so pure anymore, and that kept us separated from God. Now, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about how Humans try all sorts of cool ways. This is where I might need a... Sorry, thanks, Jess. We try all these ways to get to heaven. Because, you know, everyone wants to, to get to heaven, but we fall short time and time again because of this stuff. So, you know, we might do some good works, and that's like building a plane. And if you didn't see this the other week, I'll, I'll show you again because I think it's a good one. And we're going to try, we're going to build ourselves like, like Batman's got all the cool gadgets. We're going to build the coolest bat plane. Try, I am Batman, that's right. 
but because I'm Batman, right, to get to heaven. But are we ever going to reach there ourselves? Kids, are we going to do it? Are we going to get to heaven on a plane? No. no. Oh. Yeah, I think that would fall short too. But I do know, I do know that a, a rocket ship, a rocket can go higher, a rocket ship. That can go higher than a plane. So, so now I'm going to donate millions of dollars to, to people. I'm going to, I'm going to volunteer uh, the SPCA. I'm going to do all these really kind things for people. I'm basically like metaphorically building a rocket ship so I can get myself to heaven. Hey! And uh, God's going, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Doesn't matter what you do, you follow this stuff, this yucky stuff. We're going to deal with that. Oh, so I'm just going to put that down. Thank you very much, Jess. So God developed a rescue plan. He knew that we could not do this on our own. So he sent his rescue plan in Jesus to help us. Now, Jesus got a little bit um, mixed up on the way out. <laughs> but Jesus uh, it's pretty good. It's pure. Jesus was perfect. Jesus did not have an ounce of sin. The question is going to become, what would happen if Jesus took all of the sin of the world onto himself? Hmm. Should we find out? Come on, can be my helper. Come bless you. You take the sin of the world, and, we're going to, and Jesus is going to take that yeah, into there, mate. And let's see what happens. Wow. Jesus took our sin to the grave when he died and he left it there. But that's not the end of the story as we know. The amazing part of the story is Jesus came back. Came back and he was just as pure as he'd always been. But when he came back, he now had a gift for us. A gift for us. You stay there, mate, because you're going to be very helpful in just a second again. We're still carrying this stuff around. We have a choice. God doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, push himself on us. He gives us a choice. If we accept Jesus into our hearts, then he can do a work in our lives. We've got to be filled up by Jesus. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take Jesus, we're going to come over here, and we're just going to pour a bit of Jesus into us. Can you do that? You don't mean to help? That's very heavy. I'll help. Here we go. You ready? If we let him into our hearts. Now, does that mean that once we've let Jesus into our hearts, everything's going to be amazing? We're never, ever going to sin again. Uh, no. Hmm. no. We still live in a fallen world. But you see, you hold that for me. Yeah. Once we've let Jesus into our hearts, a couple of things happen. One, when sin enters into us again. I'm going to give that a stir. Okay, this is where it falls over. No, it's working. It's working. Through forgiveness and redemption, we have an ability to uh, move on from that. And I'm going to give you another example. So, I'd like you, my friend, up you come, up the top of the stairs. You see, in this situation, I'm going to be Jesus. And watch this. When we hear that Jesus in his heart, we, we are tethered. Right? We're together. We're as one. We're walking and journeying together. Now, Elisha's going to come across a difficult time in his life. He's going to have doubts. He's going to have stuff happen in his circumstances that are going to make him ask all sorts of questions, and the enemy's going to get in his head and try and confuse him. In that moment, he might completely walk away or let go. What's happening? Yeah. When you let Jesus into your heart, he will never let go of you. Yeah, good man. Good so to conclude this, you're not going to get to heaven in a plane through your own good works. You're not going to get to heaven in a rocket ship because you donate millions of dollars from your YouTube channel to people in need. That's good. It's not going to get you to heaven. Until you deal with the sin in your life, the only way to get to heaven 
is because of what Jesus did on the cross. And that is why Jesus had to die for us. Here we go. And that's a little bit about what we've been doing with Thrive for the last few weeks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Steve. You've set me up. You've, oh, you've, you you've done really well to just, I'm going to slot in, slot in with the word later on. And he set me up well for that. Catherine. Alrighty. So Clara Ray's going to go around with some popsicle sticks. If you get into groups of maybe like five or six around you, go around, go hand them out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Josiah, do you want to help Clara Ray? Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray for what's on the popsicle stick that you've got. So the kids have written down prayers on their um, popsicle sticks. And then we're going to add, can you get me the sand, please, Steve? It's in the kitchen. (laughs) Awesome. So I've got some scissors and some um, glue. And you're going to cut out some flowers and stick them on top of the popsicle sticks. And then come once you've prayed for them and put them in the sand. So that we're praying for our kids intentionally this year. Awesome. Pass them around to everybody. Uh, maybe kids on the table.
And I'm pretty sure that we can have some young people as well to help the children. A Vanessa and Molly and Summer and Izzy. Come up on the stage. Come and help. We're gonna we're gonna sing. Now this song here is, is called Raise a Hallelujah. Who's heard of this song before? It is a new one maybe for us today, but it's very, very easy. We can pick it up. And the kids love singing this song. So we thought we would do it. And then I'm going to teach you a new, a new song. You may have heard of it, maybe not. But join with us. Stand and we're going to sing a raise a hallelujah. Our oh, children, these instruments down there if you want it. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a I raise a hallelujah 
my favourite songs as a kid. I originally thought this was written by someone in Napier. It turns out it's not. <laughs> it was uh, someone in America, eh? So uh, I said, I reckon we can do it, team. So I said to Stu and Reese what it was, and they YouTubed it. They YouTubed a blues version, didn't you? Blues, oh, blues Brothers version and, and gospel, gospel church choir type version. And I said, we're not doing it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really easy, okay? So we're going we're gonna to do the verse and then a little bit of the chorus to show you what to do. But I expect everyone to be doing these actions, okay? I even have prizes, Ooh. right? So I'm looking for the best dancer, the best jumper, the highest jumper, the best whisperer. Ooh. And the best shelter. Okay? So I'm looking around, and actually I need someone else to help me. Ben, could you keep an eye out on the people on the stage, because I can't quite see all of them, and the people in the congregation, okay? And we're, we're going to uh, have a little communication, conversation after to choose the best, okay? So the best dancer, best jumper, best whisperer, and best shelter. So we're going to show you how to do this song. It's really easy, okay? whisperer, Ben will be listening, <laughs> then the best shouter, and then we're going to go back to the top and do them all at once, well not at the same time, but you know, one after the other, alright, we excited, yeah. okay, yeah. <clears throat> here we go. Shout 
Okay. Shana, you got the best dance award. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, okay. This is a pay it, pay it forward prize. <laughs> All right. Okay, who was the best jumper, Ben? Oh. The Cam. Cam. I did see you jumping very high. <laughs> All right, and the best whisperer? Oh. Okay, it's just a, um, a part, you know, partner and wife, you know, team. All right, Ben, and the best shouter. The, you need to choose one. I've got one. You can't choose all the kids. Samantha. Well done. Well done. Best shouter. Awesome. Okay, Sarah, it's your turn, is it? Thanks. Cool. All right, so um, we have youth here in our core and... Um, they have real cool prayer needs. So what's happening is some of my young people are down there and they're collecting some balloons that are going to be passed around with some prayer needs that the youth wrote on Wednesday night with stuff that's relevant for young people today. Um, I also have pictures up here, which Ash, I thought you could help pass these around to people. Um, so we're just going to take a moment and pray over, you know, pass them around, pray over them. Some of the needs that... Um, our young people have identified when we read through them as leaders, we're like, whoa, the heavy loads that they carry. Um, and it'd be really cool that as we pray, we're praying for freedom from some of the things that young people today carry. These aren't necessarily our young people, but they've identified things that they know within the groups that they hang out with or in the wider community of Tower College and other and St. Mary's and Carfty College. Um, and Wellington High, thank you. I knew I forgot one. Um, so yeah, so just we're going to take a moment to pray. And we're going to pray for our young people that through, you know, from today, things start shifting and changing as they're influenced by the young people we have coming to our core um, and who are engaged in youth group. Um, but I believe that, you know, we can, we can shift things for our young people in our communities and our city. So um, Ash, you want to pass these around? And girls, you can pass around the balloons. And um, we're just going to take a few moments to pray. Yep. In, in, the, in the church. Maybe that's in the church. <laughs> so you might want to get into little groups of four or five. You might want to just do it in family groups. You might like to go and sit with someone you don't know and pray, um, pray these prayers and the, well, the needs that young people have identified.
purpose that they can find for um, life and the distortions that they see of themselves and of the world around them, Lord, that they'd start to see something different through you. So I pray your presence be upon each one here. Father, I thank you for the prayers that you've heard today. And Father, we just um, release them into our community and over the schools in which we are all involved in, in your name. Amen. All right, Jack and Jess. Jack and Jess, come grab a offering plate. And Isabel. Now it is time for your tithes and offerings to be received. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the tithes and offerings that have been taken this morning. Father, for the gifts that have been given during the week online. And Father, we just pray that they would be used here for the extension of your kingdom here in Tower. Father, that they would be used to care for those who need caring for. That, would, that it would be used to see the blind see and the dead raised. Father, for the captives to be set free. Thank you for your ministry this morning. Father, we just pray, continue to move. This morning we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I want the John chapter 17. chapter 17, verses 24 to 26. Father, I want those you gave me to be with me right where I am so they can see my glory and splendor for that that you gave me, having loved me long before there even was a world, right, righteous Father, the world has never known you, but I have known you, and these disciples know that you have sent me on this mission, 
and I have made your very being known to them, who you are and what you do and coming, and continue to make it known, so that your love for me m might be in them exactly as I am in them. Thanks, Elisha. May God add his understanding to his word, and hopefully I can aid in some of that understanding. Um, so we're in the middle of our Easter series, <clears throat> and I was thinking, it's actually Palm Sunday today. Did anyone know? It's Palm Sunday? The Sunday before Holy Week? Well, leading up Holy Week before Easter Sunday. Um and so we're in the middle of our, our, our Easter series, and Nathan last week shared about uh, how Jesus prayed to the Father to be glorified. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recognize in John chapter 17. So if you have a Bible, turn with me to John 17. Um, we're just going to look at the, the three, um, quickly look over the three prayers. Don't worry, I won't be long. I promise. But there is something that I want us to rest in to, um, to reflect on today. When we get there, I'll let you know. Um, so Jesus prays three prayers. He's just finished sharing with the disciples um, that, you know, they've got to do life without him. And at this point, he turns to the Father in prayer, and he prays these three specific prayers. So one, Jesus prays to be glorified. He shared, um, Nathan shared last week from John 17, 1, where Jesus prays to be glorified, where he states the reason why he came. One, Jesus came to bring glory to God. Two, Jesus is the way to eternal life. Three, Jesus is at the rightful place, at the right hand of the Father. And Nathan put out this challenge. He said, does our own lives bring glory to God? Does our own lives bring glory to God? And through that, does our lives reflect others to others that Jesus is the way to eternal life? So when people look at us, do they know? Do, we, do, they, do they hear that message from us? Do they, do they know that Jesus is the only way to eternal life? And then if we move down, you'll see this. Most Bibles have a little title, and you see the next title. It says, Jesus prays for his disciples. So Jesus goes on to pray for them where he confirms that he has showed, has showed his disciples, as Jesus says, the people God gave him. Jesus shows him, them, the Father. Jesus confirms that his disciples understand and believe that God, the Father, sent Jesus into this world, and all that Jesus did and said came straight from the Father. The disciples accepted the words that God gave Jesus to share. Jesus, the only one who has ever seen God, made God known to his disciples through his words and actions. Jesus, knowing that he was going to soon depart from this world, prays for protection over his disciples from the evil one. And he also prays that God would sanctify them by the truth. His word is truth. As God sent Jesus into the world, Jesus now prays for his disciples and sends them into the world. So now we come to Jesus' praise for all believers. We're at verse 20. Jesus prays for all believers. And this is where I want to pause today and reflect. Jesus now prays for all believers that they too would know God as his disciples know him. Jesus knows Father God. And Jesus' mission to earth was for all people to know Father God too. I'm going to read this uh, verse from the message translation. So just jump down to verse 25. It says, Righteous Father, the world has never known you, but I have known you. And these disciples know that you sent me on this mission. 
I have made your very being known to them, who you are and what you do, and to continue to make it known so that your love for me might be in them, exactly as I am in them. We all know the scripture in John fourteen six, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus came so that all people would know the Father. Did you know that? That's the reason Jesus came. Jesus came to make a way to the Father, a direct channel to the creator of the universe. And Jesus is praying here that all believers, even after he has left this world, would continue to know God. To continue to know Jesus, who he is and what he does. Jesus also prayed that as as he has unity with the Father, that too all believers will have unity with him. This relationship between believers and the Father and Jesus will be brought about through the ministry of the counsellor. Who is the counsellor? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sent to the disciples after Jesus' return to the Father because the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within them. The Father and the Son dwell within them also and they dwell in the Father and the Son. The reason Jesus prayed to God for all believers to have the same unity that he has with the Father was so that the whole world would believe that God sent him. Remember, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The oneness that Jesus has with the Father is what Christ desires for us. When we, the believers, have a unity or oneness with God the Father and Christ the Son by the Holy Spirit, we can be a greater influence in the world. When there is disunity in our relationships, with the, in our relationship with the Godhead, we can present a less effective message to the world. And what is that message? That God sent His Son to show us the way to the Father. And that just as God loves him, he too loves us. Because you remember the, uh, the scientist Steve, he, uh, he put out a, a very, very good illustration there for me. Where sin blocked that channel from us and God and us and each other. Jesus came to take away that sin, to make that channel free and clear for us to be able to have a relationship with the God of the universe. Amen? So when we think about our children and youth today, they too need to know Jesus. They too need to know what he has done for them. They need to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the bridge that connects them to the Father. So when Jesus prays here in verse 20 for all believers, that's us. That's our young people. That's our children. He prays in verse 25, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. We must pray for our children and youth that they would continue to know the Father and know the love he has for them. This could be our prayer today, a very simple prayer. 
We focus in on verse 25, that they would know the Father, who He is and what He does, and that they would continue to know the Father and the Son, and that they would know the love of the Father. Put your hand up if there is a child or young person in your life, in your streets or your community, in your family, that needs to know the Father. Put your hand up if there's someone in your life in your community, your work, your street, your neighbourhood, that needs to know God. Can you think of that one person? So so think of a young person and think of a child. They need to know God. They need to know the love of God. God. And so in a moment, we're going to have the opportunity to pray for that child or young person that God has brought to your mind right now. And if you notice around the room, there is um, a few prayer stations set up. Thank you, Catherine, for organizing that. And I'm going to give you the opportunity now to respond to God's word. I encourage you to spend some time now praying for the children and youth that God brought to your mind. And I'd just like to invite Catherine up to share with us what we're going to do at each of those stations. But today is International Prayer Day of Prayer for Children and Youth. We've chosen as a Salvation Army to set aside a day, a Sunday, a moment, an hour, whatever it might look like, to pray specifically, to pray intentionally for youth and children. And so right now I I invite you, as Jesus prayed for all believers in John 17, pray that they will come to know God and know the love of the Father. So at this table down here, um, we're going to be making a family tree. Um, And so it's got pieces of paper at each, if you forget. But it says, um, using a family tree, write the names of your family or the people closest to you. Use it as a guide to pray for those you love or write specific prayers next to their names. So there's a tree that you can write their names in. Um, Across at this one, we've got some Play-Doh. So you can do a Play-Doh prayer um, to create something you want to thank God for or that person that you thought of just then. And down the back is a prayer wall that... um, has been made for you so you can string up the names of the children um, onto the prayer wall so we remember to pray for them. Um, So there's pieces of paper and you can string them up. Awesome. So I'll let you go.
early hours of this morning, I got a, a message from God saying that we should light this candle in honor of all the children and youth that are no longer with us. You can interpret that how you want to. But I just thought I'd light that candle. Awesome. Mark's going to do the benediction. I'm going to number six, 23 to 20. I mean, 20, first 24 to 26. For, for Lord bless you and keep you. For Lord make his face sign on you and be crisis to you. For Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Okay, take note. Josh is going to help me today. So, here we go. Am I, which one am I, am I starting with that one? Okay, Good Friday. It's next week. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Friday the 22nd of April at 9.30. Starts at the Baptist Church that way. And then we're going to make our way to Tawa. And we're going to end at St. Christopher's Anglican Church. So it's like that three-course meal, yeah? So um, I know there's going to be some pretty exciting things happening here. I imagine there will be there and there as well, but uh, watch this space. Nathan's got something pretty awesome up his sleeve. All right, Josh, this one. Easter Sunday, Sunday 4th April at 10 a.m. Easter Sunday at the Tower Courts will be combined with Tower Bastion Baptist. Kids Church will be out for a craft with Jordan. Awesome. Sounds good. Oh, Josh, you're still going. Keeping children safe, KCS. Training on 18th of April at Tower Court. This is for our young and children volunteers to do their annual training. For more information, please see Catherine. Great job, buddy. All right, Easter camp. Can I ask uh, that everyone pray for the 132 young people and leaders who will be attending Easter camp? 132. That's awesome. That, yeah, right? Uh, at Mystery Creek this year, we are believing for our mighty God to move in power and for our young lives to be transformed over this weekend. Absolutely. Amen to that. And Josh, last one for you, buddy. Red Shield Street Appeal. Appeal. 10th to 16th May of May 2021. Well done. Keep that Red Shield Appeal time in your calendar. Thank you very much. Well done, Josh. Cool. So the youth that are going to um, Easter Camp, if you can come and join us up the front here, just to name and shame you. No. No, please come. The youth and young people and the leaders. AJ, that's including you. AJ, that's including you. Come on. Come on. Cool. So we, how many young people have we in leaders? Six. Six young people. Six young people? Four leaders. Four leaders going from Tower. One preschooler. One preschooler. Awesome. How many of my preschoolers are you taking? <laughs> yeah, great. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's all right. You've got an Easter camp, buddy. Woo! Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, and Clara Ray, hey, she's going to have a great time at Easter Camp with all the young people. 5,000, over 5,000 young people normally at Mystery Creek. So um, 400 from the Salvation Army in total going to the Baptist Easter Camp, which is fantastic. Uh, so we just want to pray with you. Can you all stand with me? Um, come in. Come in. If you want to gather around them, you can come. Lay hands on these young people. That's not the case, yes. No, we'll just stay, outstretch your, outstretch your hands. Let's pray for these young people and these leaders. Father, we just, um, Father, we know, oh, I know personally, how significant Easter camps can, uh, are for, for young people. Father, that, that it can be a transfa transformational time in their lives and in their walk with you. And so, Father, we just pray for our young people 
uh, for the young people of this division, for the young people of the Salvation Army and of, the, of New Zealand gathering together at Mystery Creek, that it would be a transformational time there, that, Father, you would move by your spirit, that, Father, for the leaders, uh, that they would know your presence upon their lives, that, that the young people would, would really sense your presence upon their lives, and, Father, that they uh, would come and to know you deep, in a deeper way. Um, Father, we just pray uh, as the bus goes up on Thursday night, Lord, that you just go with our, uh, all, the, all the teams that are going, heading off that way up north. Uh, Father, that it would be a quick trip, quicker than what even they're expecting. Um, and Father, that as they go, they'll have just an awesome time and that uh, they'll come back buzzing with the stories and the testimonies to share of your goodness. Uh, so Father, for the, for the parents left behind, Father, we just pray you, we know that they will need your prayer support at this time uh, and that they will just have a good weekend. Uh, and yeah, Father, you just can't continue to have your way in our young people and in our leaders, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so one other thing that Catherine and I both had at the same time is that we would like all the children and all the youth to come back up front now. And we'd just like everybody else to come and gather around them and pray, or from your seats again, outstretched hands, um, just because it is a day of prayer. And I think it's really, it'd be really important that we pray over the young people that we have here today too. So all the children and all the youth, please come up the front. Excellent. Okay, so come in the middle, guys. So everybody can see you clearly and well. Spread out a bit. That's good. I like that. Excellent. Okay. Good work. Good work, Harley. It was good to get a lift, huh? <laughs> All right. So we're just going to take a moment. We're going to pray. So um, you guys can stand up or sit down, stretch out your arms. Um, if you feel a prayer that you'd like to come and pray over them, please come and take the mic off me. Um, but we'll just take this moment. So, Father God, I want to thank you for these young people and children that you've entrusted to us. Father, that each of them carries a, a special part of you within them. Father, it's different to what the other person carries. But the gifts that you've imparted into them, Lord, we pray that they will continue to grow, that we'd continue to see them develop within them. Father, that they would know your presence over their life, that they would know your calling, and that they would hear you day by day telling them which way to go and giving them the words of encouragement that they need and that they know that they are loved and they are chosen and called by you. Yes, Lord, we... Uh as we see in your word, Father, that Jesus prayed for all believers, we pray now for our children and our youth, that, Father, they would know you as their personal saviour, that they would know you as their friend, as their father. God, may they know you, who you are, and what you've done for them. Father, we pray for children in our community that don't know you. We pray that, Lord, you would... Um, you would be with them and Father that they too would come to know you that these children and these youth represented here today would be able to go into their schools into their, their, their dance classes their sports teams whatever it may be Father that they would be able to take you into those environments so that others in this world would know you in Jesus name Amen Oh, Father God, I pray for all these beautiful kids. May your blessings be upon them. May they know who the real powerful God is. And our God loves to have fun with the kids. So have fun, kids. And I pray for all the other kids who don't know you, Lord Jesus. Speak to them, Lord Father. May your blessings be upon them all. May they know you, your love, your care, all in one. The powerful, mighty God that you are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's have morning tea. Let's just give a big round of applause for the kids who have all been involved today and the youth. Thank you very much, guys.